Welcome to uh, our video series, uh, What CEOs Learn from Board Roles. Uh, we are delighted to have with us uh, today, Carsten Hellman, uh, CEO of ALK, a pharmaceutical company specialized in the development and manufacture of allergy immunotherapy products worldwide and a non-executive director of Coloplast, uh, a multinational that develops and manufactures and markets medical devices. Carsten, a warm welcome to you and uh, thank you so much for taking time to be, be with us today. Thank you, Tobias. It's a pleasure to be here. Carsten, um, you joined the board of Coloplast uh, a few months after being appointed CEO of ALK back in 2017. Uh, how has your non-executive uh, role benefited your day job as a CEO? I joined Coloplast a few months after actually I got the CEO job at ALK and ALK was also in a situation where a lot of things needed to be done. So I think one of the things it really gave me was a, a room to think where I met other people, other executives and another business setting from another state of business setting. Meaning that uh, instead of just being sucked into solving problems where I were, I had an opportunity to get inspired by other people and also broaden the network a little bit in Denmark as I came back from a job in France where I was in an executive of Sanofi, coming back to Denmark after years abroad, it also was uh, sort of spinning me into a, a, a good Danish network where I could benefit from good advices from trusted people, also in the phases I was going through in my job as CEO of ALK. And Carsten, what, uh, what surprised you about the, the, the non-executive role, uh, given your, your prior interactions with boards as an executive? I think one of the things that uh, I learned, this is not my first executive, non-executive role, but uh, certainly the biggest one I've had uh, is the ability to not be an operational executive when you enter the boardroom. In particular, when you are very busy, you are transforming, you are energizing your own organization, and then suddenly you step into another setting where you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to listen, to guide, and to help an, an existing management on dealing with their issues and their problems and the governance part of that as well. And I think that internal conflict where, where you almost want to jump into the shoes of the CEO and, and do his job or his, her job, uh, you really need to hold yourself back and reflect about what's going on and take the best of what you have learned. And I, I, I can say that in particular over the last year and a half or year when we had the Corona crisis and so forth, actually there was a lot of exchange because suddenly there wasn't a given answer to any problem. And there actually we could benefit of having a platform where uh, we, we just try to discuss what's going on, what can be done. So this is about having the right balance, uh, jumping from your very busy executive job into a boardroom where you're supposed to do something totally different. I'm very happy I had a few, two or three smaller board positions before I got this one big one here, because in the beginning when I, when I reflect on how I acted in my first board role compared to this one, it's certainly different because in the first one, I was uh, uh, telling the management what I thought they should do, which is not the board's role. And this is really where I see uh, 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 the most interesting dynamics, but also the most difficult dynamics. Interesting. And Carsten, as you, as you think about helping both companies uh, reset for, for resilience in 2021, uh, does the operational distance you have as a board member give you insight into leading your team at uh, ALK on an everyday basis? Yeah, definitely, because in, in particular, when we have a situation where there's a lot of unknowns, um, you can't really calculate your answer. So any enlightened and qualified discussion you can have uh, outside your, your, your own current uh, CEO role, where you also have to, to, to acknowledge that there's a lot of uh, embedded uh, uh, conflicts and discussions in your, in your job with reflects to your, uh, and relates to your company, where in, in a board role, 
it's more like a free space where you can exchange opinions in, in particular in an uncertain world we are right now where there isn't that concrete answer. You can have much more reflections and guidance to each other. So certainly there's a lot of the things that we implemented and did in, in a cooler place that I'm bringing back to ALK uh, as, okay, they tried this, that didn't work and the other way around. And I, I think actually it is fair to say that I also brought some things in we did they didn't think about in, in, in Coloplast, which they then started implementing and thinking about. So I think there was a very, very good exchange. And these times of crisis uh, is really, really helpful to have this uh, uh, room where you can where you can reflect and discuss and, and, and support each other. And um, both ALK and, and Coloplast are in the same sector, broadly speaking, in the healthcare space. How do you think that has influenced your decision making in both roles and, and, and how do you think joining another company's board from a different sector could be different? What, what do you see as sort of the challenges and benefits if you, if you were to compare and contrast? I think we now have a, a, a size both in the LK and Cool Plus that it's not 100% and so much the uh, the, uh, the sector as such that drives most of it. it. I think it's more in smaller companies where the board also come in with their concrete competences in regulatory or marketing and strategy and so forth that are mostly helpful. Um, I will though say that since I'm early in my, my, my board career, of course, it, it's better to stand on something where you have some knowledge and not in a totally uh, uh, novel industry or sector where everything you say is wrong because you have no clue what's going on and you don't have this gut feeling of the dynamics. I would say though now being having three or four uh, roles already in healthcare, I think you can step out to adjacencies at least that, that, um, uh, that you can leverage on. And in terms of the network you build, Carsten, in, in your opinion, uh, what, what are the benefits and, and what would you say are the challenges of sitting on the board of a Danish company versus the board of uh, an international company or a non-Danish company? I think network is important because when you are in a, in a board, you are in a very, very trusted environment, also because of the simple fact that you have so much compliance, you have to, to, uh, to comply to... Uh, and I, I, I would say, though, I took a Danish board position. First of all, of course, uh, you, you take what's offered when it's good, but also, uh, also starting a new CEO job in a company that needs to be transformed. I, I didn't think it was prudent to also start off with having a board position in the U.S. and spending 30 days traveling back and forth and so forth. So there's also some practicalities into it. I hope, uh, I hope for, for the opportunity to over the next couple of years to get some international board positions because uh, the whole political environment, the compliance environment and the European and American environment, maybe also Chinese, we talk a lot about the blue and the, the red world going forward. Uh, getting into the middle of that could be very, very important for a CEO role to, to get closer to that. And then I just have to accept that Denmark is a very small company and even though we think that our companies are very big and very global, having been in the sector of management and OP, <laughs> they are not. So, so there is, of course, some, some things internationally that would be very good to have under the hood. But you also have to do it at the right point in time when the current company you have and you own board accept that you use that more time being uh, more international in your board roles. But I hope that that, that that will be possible going forward because I think that will be a next level of of inspiration and, and, uh, and uh, also ex uh, experience to get for myself. Well, Carsten, thank you uh, so much for, for, uh, for your insights, which I found were really interesting and very valuable. So uh, that is much appreciated. And um, I wish you a, a wonderful day. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Have a nice day.